This is a quick walkthrough of some of the main controls of the Contex CMS 6000 P2 ultrasound machine. It is absolutely not an endorsement of the product, it's just here to help people who for one reason or another may have already bought this machine and just need a little bit of guidance with the main controls. The fan on the machine is very loud so please excuse the background noise and I'm clearly not a videographer so I'm sorry about the amateur video recordings as well. But I hope this helps and if there's anything I haven't covered or you have any questions please send me an email and I'll do my best to help. This machine has an overall gain called main gain here and that lightens up your image if you turn it up and makes it darker if you turn it down. Don't worry about the numbers that are displayed so when you adjust it you'll see a gain number here. You really don't have to worry about that it's just if it looks too dark turn it up, if it looks too bright turn it down. You've also got a near and a far gain. Near means the near field which is the top half of your screen far means the far field, the bottom half of your screen. You rarely would need to adjust those individually, most of the time you're going to be using your main overall gain here. You may wish to adjust your scanning frequency. If you're scanning a very large animal and you're lacking penetration, you might want to reduce your frequency. You can change frequency by pressing the FREQ button here. So. You can only adjust it one way on this machine, it'll just keep cycling through. So on this particular probe that I'm using, the maximum is 5 MHz. So I'm up to 5 here. I just increase the gain. This technically should be giving me the highest resolution I can get with this probe. It does have a tissue harmonic imaging mode. To be honest, it doesn't seem to do a whole lot on this machine, and it's quite unusual that you wouldn't have a frequency range displayed with your tissue harmonics. So I'm not convinced that there actually are any tissue harmonics going on on this machine. So I would ignore that. And then you can see when, when I go past that mode, I'm back down to my lowest frequency, which on this probe is two megahertz. And I think even on this machine, you can appreciate that it's a bit of a coarser image at two megahertz and a slightly more refined image when I get up to 5 megahertz there. I do have to bring my gain up a bit though, it does seem to be a very dark image, although admittedly this machine wasn't designed for, for scanning humans with this probe, so it's perhaps not a very fair test. Depth is the other important control that's located here. In general you want to start with that quite far out, and then when you've located a pregnancy and you want to look at it in detail, reduce that depth so it fills up most of your screen. Focal point is also an important control. Bizarrely on this machine, the thing that you want to use most of all, which is the placement of the focal points, is hidden up here on the keyboard with the letter F. And the thing you want to adjust far less frequency, which is the number of focal points, here has its own pride of place button focus. My machine is starting with four focal points by default. I don't know if that's the case for everybody. I would reduce that to just one or two because for every focal point you have, your machine is having to send and then receive a signal, then send and receive a signal for as many focal points as there are. So you're going to slow your frame rate dramatically by having a lot more focal points. So I would just have one because usually you're only looking at one place at a time. And then you use that F to bring it down to your level of interest. So if I want to look at something that's around about here on my screen, I want to make sure that little arrow is in line with it or just below it. You don't want to have your focal point right at the top here, but be looking at a pregnancy down here because the beam will narrow up here and then it will diverge rapidly. So everything down here is going to be out of focus. When you have an image you like, you can freeze it using the freeze button. And you can save images and you can also save videos on here. But what you can't seem to do is export them in any useful format that you can actually play back on any device other than the ultrasound scanner itself. So that's perhaps a little bit useless, but at least you can save them on the device if you want to. So you would use your tracker ball and click File Management. You use the Set button, like Enter on a computer, to click. 
and you can then do video save if you wanted to do that. When you select that, you can, if you have your USB stick in, you can move and click USB and save it onto your USB. But like I said, not much use doing that at the moment because I can't find a way that you can play those files after doing that. But they will then be saved on your machine and you can access them later by going back to the file management system. Go to video read and then there will be the video that you saved any time before even if you power off your machine it should still be saved on there when you boot back up again same goes for images although you can save them a lot more quickly there's um, a floppy disk icon where you can just automatically save without having to go through all of those steps just there it says save so you can just click that and it will just save an image for you without having to click all of those things if you want to play back right away you can click cine loop and then by pressing this auto slash manual button it can play back the video for you um, in my case it's the last 600 frames but it'll basically be if you've uh, frozen your image you know only 200 frames ago you're only going to have 200 frames so it's looking back over what i've done there you can also manually move it back and forth so if i turn off the auto I can use these arrow keys to just flip through the frames if there was a particular one I wanted perhaps to save an image of. Other controls that might be of interest, you do have dynamic range on this machine but it seems to be quite limited. So dynamic range, it's displayed here and that is the, the range of greys that you have displayed on, on your monitor. Um, there's a, a range for the transducer and there's obviously a range for the monitor as well and it has to compress that range into something that can be displayed by your monitor. If you have a wide dynamic range then technically you should see many more types of grey, many more shades of grey and that can be useful if you're doing something like I'm doing, scanning a liver and you want to see the, all the different textures. But if you wanted to look at an early pregnancy where high contrast was desirable, then you might want to have a very low dynamic range. Now you can see in this example here, this really isn't doing anything useful at all. It's just making my image very dark, to be honest. Um, whether when you were scanning an animal for pregnancy, it would do much more than this, you'll have to try. The gamma button is probably another slightly useless control in that I haven't found any of them that seem to do much. If you press gamma once, um, you just get this horrendous image. Now you get it kind of horrendous on the other end of the scale and uh, horrendous again. So I think anything other than the default is probably a little bit useless. Um, possibly that one could be useful. In a way it serves the same purpose that dynamic range should have served and didn't, which is to give you a, a more high co contrast image. The other buttons here like left right flip or up down flip, not recommended, it's just going to confuse your brain. You should try to be consistent when you scan all the time. So on your probe, no matter what size probe you have, you'll have a little dot on the side and the idea is to line that dot up with that dot on screen. So if you are going to flip your image, you're going to mess that system up. M mode is usually used for cardiac work. I don't see any reason why you'd want to do this, but if you do, that's how you turn it on. You would line this up with a beating heart, with the fetus's heart, and then you press it again. It will fill up the whole screen if you want to see it then. And the idea is that um, if I just imagine there's a heart beating here, so you would see the movement of the ventricles, the contraction of the ventricular walls, you would see the mitral valve up and down, and from that you could calculate the heart rate if you wanted to, if you wanted to look for any signs of fetal distress, for example.